Well, hello everyone, my name is Wiggo and welcome back to another challenge video. Today, I'll be playing through Pokemon Enhanced Blue version as Professor Oak. Pokemon Enhanced Blue is basically just the normal blue, but you can catch every single Pokemon that you want in it, so there's no version exclusives or anything like that. I know what you're on about, Oak doesn't normally have a team, but in Generation 1, there was actually a glitch battle where you could fight Oak down at Cinnabar Island. There was a rumor where Oak was actually the champion and he would replace Blue, but they later on changed that around so that your rival would actually be the champion. But Oak still has some data for his team, he has 5 Pokemon, those being one of the starters, Arcanine, Gyarados, Executor, and Tauros. As you can see, his team is very, very good, very similar to the normal team that you fight when you face Blue. But let's see how Professor Oak would do in the entire Kanto region. I honestly think he'll have no struggle whatsoever, I don't even think we're going to lose a single battle, but we'll have to see how good Oak actually is. Rules are simple, I can only use Professor Oak's Pokemon in battle, no items in battle whatsoever, and I am able to use an HM Pokemon. Also, don't forget to smash that like button, hit that subscribe button, and turn on the notifications if you haven't done that already. And with that out of the way, let's jump right into Pokemon Blue Enhanced version. We name ourselves Oak. I couldn't find a ROM hack that actually had Oak as a character sprite, so I'm just doing it like this. And then as we walk into the grass, we encounter Professor Oak himself. And he brings us to his lab where we can choose our starter Pokemon. And we're gonna go with Charmander because I feel like he doesn't get enough love from Game Freak. I also name him Not Enough because I feel like Charizard still doesn't have enough other forms yet. Then we go to the Pokemon to pick up Professor Oak's package. We bring it back to him and we get the Pokedex. After that, we can finally travel along the Kanto region, and the first thing I do is grind my Charmander up to level 9 so that it can easily learn Ember and take out the whole of Viridian Forest with that. But before we go to Viridian Forest, I have to take on my rival, and he starts off with a level 9 Pidgey, who I just Ember away at and easily take it down. Next up is Squirtle, but this thing doesn't know a water attack yet, so we easily scratch it a bunch of times to win ourselves our first rival battle. Then we went on to Brock's gym, but even though fire is not very effective on rock types, I still burned down his whole gym with Ember very easily. His Geodude and Onyx couldn't even touch my little lizard. After I got my gym badge, I took on some trainers and my Charmander evolved into a Charmeleon at level 16. Then I got scammed in a Poke Center because I bought a stupid fish for 500 polka dollars. This man just made some stonks. We name our newly acquired Goldfish King and then we go to Mount Moon to get myself the then before I took on the next rival fight, I wanted to level up my Magikarp a little bit so that he would learn Tackle at level 15. But this took a damn long time because I had to switch train him for like an hour straight until he reached level 15. Since he doesn't get any attacking moves before that, my Charmeleon had to always come in and take out the Pokemon until he eventually learned Tackle. Then I took on Peepee at the Nugget Bridge and he starts off with Pidgeotto and my Charmeleon is now level 23 because of all the Magikarp grinding. Since the Pidgeotto can barely touch me, I'm easily able to take it down with 3 Embers. Next is Abra, so I switch in Magikarp for him to get some more XP because Abra cannot touch us at all since it only has Teleport. So after a few tackles, it's down. Next is Rattata and I decide to stay in with Magikarp to try and take it down but sadly enough I wasn't able to do that so Charmeleon had to finish it off with an Ember and last up was Squirtle. And since his best attacking move is just Bubble which barely does any damage on my Charmeleon I'm easily able to take it down with 3 scratches and win myself another rival battle. Next is Bill and he turned himself into a... I don't know what this is but it's not a Clefairy. So we turn him back and then I level up my Magikarp just a little bit more in the grass so that he would reach level 20 and evolve into his final form, Gyarados. He learns Bite, which in this game is a normal move because the dark typing didn't exist yet. And then I went to the water type gym leader, Misty, and I just wrecked her entire team with Bite, like she couldn't even touch me 
that's how bad of a slaughter this was. Next we have to go to a boat because there's a tiny little tree standing in our way in front of the third gym. Why would you plant it there? But apparently this captain has a very nice cutting technique for tiny little trees, so we have to pick that up real quick. But before we do that, we have to do another rival battle. But this time his Pokemon didn't really get thick, even though he now has a Kadabra and a War Turtle, which is a big upgrade from last time, but still, my Gyarados sweep through his Pidgeotto with two bites, his Raticate as well, his Kadabra was one bite, and War Turtle was two bites as well. This might be the easiest run I've ever done. We then get the Cut HM and went to Lieutenant Surge's gym and I thought this was going to be a little bit of a problem because his Raichu is level 24 and knows Thunderbolt. But I still let off with Gyarados even though we're 4 times weak to his Pokemon. My bite one shot his Voltor because it was a critical hit. Pikachu was a one shot as well because we got another critical hit. Next is Raichu and as I suspected it took me out in a single Thunderbolt so I switched in Charmeleon. I start off strong by going for an Ember as he hits me with a Growl so I can go for scratches. Then I go for another Ember as we get hit with a very hard Thunderbolt. Next turn he could take me out with a Thunderbolt but he goes for Thundershock, I'm alive. I go for a cut to see how much that does but it doesn't quite take him out. Next turn he can take me out again but he goes for Growl, stupid. And my Ember is able to finish this battle off because Gen 1 AI is just atrocious. Then we travel to Mount Moon and go straight to the Pokemon Tower for another rival fight. My Charmeleon is able to... 4 shot the Pijado, so 4 hits of Ember takes it down while we get hit with only a gust and a quick attack in the process. And our accuracy also got lowered because of sand attack. Growlithe is next and I go into Gyarados and Water Gun is actually a TM in this game so I teach that to my Gyarados and now I'm easily able to one shot the Growlithe. Next is Execute and that thing's special is quite high so my Ember doesn't one shot it but its attack is very low so Barrage barely does any damage and one more Ember takes down the seeds. Next is Kadabra which like always is a one shot with Bite and War Turtle is a two shot with Bite as well. Then we dismantle an entire Team Rocket hideout as a 10 year old kid because they decide to attack us with rats. That's it. Then we fight Don Giovanni himself and he starts off with a Rock Gyarados and my Water Gyarados takes it out with a single water gun. His Rhyhorn is next and that is also a single water gun. Yeah. See this game is just so easy. And last was Kangaskhan. On his first turn he goes for a guard spec which I have no idea why he uses that. So I go for a bite. It doesn't really do half so I decide to go for two more dragon rages to take him out while we get hit with a few comet punches. But Giovanni was very easy as well. Next is Erika and I just decide to go in without even healing so my Charmeleon starts off being paralyzed because I thought that might even make the challenge a little bit harder. But sadly enough this victory bell knows rap and he just goes for it turn one and my Charmeleon isn't able to snap out of it anymore so we're easily taken out. So then I switch in King, I go for the Dragon Rage, it does about half but not quite, then he puts me to sleep with Sleep Powder and hits me with a Razor Leaf, I snap out, go for another Dragon Rage, he then hits me again and then finally take out the Victory Bell with another Bite. Tangela is next and that thing has the move Bind but it barely does any damage and I got out really quickly so 3 Bites and the Spaghetti Monster is down. Last is Vile Plume, so I go for a bite, it again doesn't do enough damage to two shots so then I go for the Dragon Rage as we get hit with two Petal Dances and I'm only left with 11 HP but my Gyarados finishes it off with another Dragon Rage and now we have four Gym Badges in our pocket. Go to the top of Pokemon Tower, find Mr. Fuji, even though I know what kind of schemes he was up to back in his early days. But yet again, we ignore that and we get ourselves the Poke Flute. Then I defeated some trainers up on my way to Fuchsia City and my Charmeleon reached level 36 so he evolved into Charizard. Then I go to the Safari Zone to capture myself and execute and I name it Seedot because people always comment on my videos when I name our execute scrambled that they're not eggs, they're actually seeds. And yes, I know that. Then after spending about 2 hours of my life in the Safari Zone, I eventually caught a Tauros after like 10 or 11 of them ran away from me 
this was like the hardest capture I've ever had to do. And with this Tauros, we almost have a full team, so I pick up the HM for Surf and head on to Koga's gym. I decided to test out Toro immediately and apparently Toro means bull in Spanish. And he's pretty damn strong because he has a high speed stat, his crit chance is very high as well. Combine that with Stomp which can also flinch, this thing is an absolute monster. We stomp the first Pokemon coughing three times to take it out very easily. Next up is Muck but he disabled my stomp straight away so I have to go for tackles here and I got him down into just above half health but then we got taken out by the poison damage. So then I switch in King, I go for the water gun, get a critical hit, he just sets up a minimize and next turn I take him out with another water gun. Next is coughing and that thing gets three shot by my water gun as well. Last up is wheezing and this thing is level 43 so it does a lot load of damage to my Gyarados with Sludge. And as I'm about to hit it for my fourth time, he's like, I'ma I'm head out and goes for the self-destruct. Then I go to the department store because I'm going to be needing a fire and a leaf stone for later on. And then I cleared out the entirety of Silphco because some Team Rocket goons tried to take it over. And who's there waiting on the top of the building for us? It's PP. His first Pokemon is a Pidgeot and I just stomp that thing to death while he just uses a few quick attacks on me. Next is Growlithe and that thing does some huge damage with takedowns but eventually after missing two of my stomps I was finally able to take it down because it kept on using Leer but I missed those stomps because the Pidgeot used Sand Attack on me as well. Next was Execute and if you would stomp on them in real life they would just crack but here they just survive and take out a literal bull. So I then go into my own execute, barrage it a lot of times and I'm able to take it out. Next is Alakazam and even though I hit a few barrages, it just kept on using recover and eventually took me out with some confusion damage. So I switch in Charizard which now knows Slash which is a basically a guaranteed crit in this game. So two slashes take out the Alakazam and last up is Blastoise. And you might think he's going to switch here because Blastoise is strong against Charizard. No, 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 no. I'm gonna go in and go for some slashes. I was able to get him down into red HP before he took me out with a water gun. I want y'all to comment down below, Gen 1 AI is dumber than, and then you guys have to fill it in with something that's very dumb. I wanna see what you guys can come up with here. So then I switch in Gyarados, I spit at the Blastoise and then it takes it out and I go up to Giovanni. The man himself starts off with a Nidorino so I lead off with my bull and I'm able to take him down with 3 stomps without taking too much damage in the process. Kangaskhan is next and that thing really can't touch us either, we get hit with a Comet Punch but it barely does any damage so 3 stomps also take down the Kangaroo. Next is Rhyhorn, so I switch in Gyarados, I spit at it, and it's dead. Our last is Nidoqueen, and he just uses a guard spec and two water guns to take it out. This is not what I thought this challenge was going to be. With Giovanni defeated, it's time for us to head up to Sabrina's gym. And even though she has a load of psychic type Pokemon which have special that is through the roof, we just hit them with physical attacks, which takes down the Kadabra with two stomps. Next is Mr. Mime, one stomp brings him down into half health, then he goes through a barrier, so two more stomps finish that thing off as well. Next is Venomoth, and I'm able to hit two stomps, but he paralyzes me, and then hits me with three side beams because I'm not able to attack, and my Taro sadly goes down. So I switch in King and finish off that Moth with the Bite. Next is Alakazam, he starts off by setting up a Reflect, so my Bite barely does any damage. I go for a Hydro Pump, it almost takes him out, but then he goes for the Recover. I go for another Bite, I get the critical hit and take out the Alakazam in one shot. Then I went to the mansion on Cinnabar Island to get myself my last team member, Growlithe, and I name him R Beats. I couldn't find a 9, but R9 Beats is the one that suggested this challenge to me. If you all don't know who he is, he's also a YouTuber that makes some very good content. You all should check him out, link will be in the description. Next is Blaine, so I now lead off with Gyarados and I have Surf as well. So I one shot the Growlithe with Surf, one shot the Ponyta with Surf, one shot the Rapidash with Hydro Pump, and also one shot the Arcanine with Hydro Pump. Yeah, Gyarados is kinda OP. The next up is Don Giovanni as the final gym leader with his ground type. So yeah, Gyarados is going to shine again in this gym. So yeah, we one shot Rhyhorn, one shot Duck Trio, one shot Nidoqueen, one shot Nidoking as well, 
and last up is Rhydon, and that thing survives us. No, no, it doesn't. It's another one shot, boys. And then, as we get the Earth Badge, the final gym badge of the Kanto region, I'm about to go up to the Victory Road, but no, PP has to stop us. He starts off with Pidgeot, and yes, Gyarados can learn Thunderbolt in this game, so we just two shot that with. Thunderbolt basically. All other Rhyhorns died because of water type moves, this one is no different. The little fire puppy is down in a single serve as well. For Execute I switch into Growlithe and I go for 4 Embers because it just kept on using Solar Beam and I was easily able to take it out again. Next is Alakazam so I switch in Tauros and even though I'm 15 levels lower I still 2 shot it with Stomp. Last is this level 53 Blastoise and this thing should have some pretty decent defenses so I think my Tauros is going down here. Oh no, he's dead already. Well, the main game was pretty much a sweep. I hope the Elite Four and Champion can give me more of an actual challenge. So with my team now raging from level 26 up to level 47, I decided to take a shot at the Elite Four. I didn't think that I would get far because I'm severely underleveled here, but let's see how we can do at these levels. But first I had to evolve Growlithe and Execute with my Leaf and Firestone into Arcanine and Executor. And then I went up to Lorelei, Lorelei, Lorelou? Anyway, she starts off with Dugong while I start off with Gyarados. I misclick and go for Hydro Pump, but it doesn't really do any significant damage to me either. So the next turn I went for Thunderbolt but she healed up with rest, then I hit 3 more Thunderbolts because she can't attack the turn she comes out of rest, and I took out to Dugong. Next is Cloyster who was a 2 shot with Thunderbolt after we get hit with a Spike Cannon. Next is Slowbro so I switch in Exeggutor and this thing is more than twice my level but I was still able to take it out with bamming Solar Beam and using Hypnosis on it. Next is Jinx so I try with Charizard but we get one shot by a super effective Ice Punch. So then I switch in Arcanine, I go for an Ember but it barely does any damage while his Ice Punch does a load of damage. Next turn he goes for Body Slam, it doesn't take me out so I go for a takedown which does way more. Then he misses his double slap so I'm able to take down the Jinx with another takedown. Last is Lapras so I switch in Toro, go for the stomp, barely do any damage and get taken out by a single Hydro Pump. So then I switch in Gyarados who is able to take down the Lapras with 3 more Thunderbolts without going down himself. Next up is Bruno and do I even have to talk about Bruno who is always a sweep with any type of run you try, he never gives me trouble. Rock Gyarados goes down with a Surf. Next is Hitmonchan, so I switch in Executor and I take him down with two Psychics while only getting hit with a Mega Punch which didn't take me out even though he's more than twice my level. Next is Hitmonlee, so I try to stay in, maybe get lucky, but we get hit with the High Jump Kick and we die. So then I switch in Gyarados, I go for a Bite, we get hit with a Mega Kick which does a load of damage, but then I go for another Bite, he sets up a Focus Energy and one more Bite takes out the Hitmonlee. Next up is Onyx and that thing goes down to a single surf just like the last one. Last is Matchamp, I go for the Hydro Pump, he can hit me very hard and maybe kill my Gyarados here but he just goes for focus energy and I finish off the battle with another surf. Next is Oak's girlfriend, so basically my girlfriend Agatha. She starts off with Gengar and I start off with my level 27 Executor, keep that in mind and she just keeps on going for Confuse Rain and Hypnosis and my Executor takes it out with just 3 Psychics. Next is Golbat, so I switch in King, take it out with 2 Thunderbolts, easy as that. Next is Haunter, I go for the Serve but we get confused, so next turn I hit myself in Confusion and then I finish off the Haunter with another Hydro Pump. Next is Arbok, so I switch in Executor again, I go for the Psychic while we get paralyzed by Glare. Then we get hit by a Bite and I go for another Psychic, but he heals up with a Super Potion, I go for the Psychic again, doesn't take him out, he goes for bite, I'm left with a few HP and take him out next turn with another psychic. I'm sweeping the league with a level 27 Executor, this is jokes. Now last up is another Gengar, so I switch in Tauros and go for Tail Whips and Leers until his defense is lowered by 6 stages and then I take myself out by the confusion damage. Then I switch in Charizard and go for the Dig because I learned him that via TM and the Gengar is down in one hit. Then last of the Elite Four is of course Lance the Dragon Master. But he doesn't have a blue eyes white dragon, what, what is this? 
He starts off with his Gyarados, so I start off with mine, and I can easily take that thing out with two Thunderbolts. Next is Dragonair, so I switch in my level 36 Toro, and I take down this very high level Dragonair with a few stomps. Next up is the second Dragonair, and I think because my Toro is now damaged, I will probably go to- oh, Dragonair is dead already. Ugh. Next is Aerodactyl, so I switch in Gyarados, we get hit with a bite, but a single Hydro Pump takes him out. Next is Dragonite, so I switch in my own dragon that isn't a dragon, and we are now dead because of Hyper Beam. So I guess I have to go into Toro and go for some stomps. Oh no, Toro is dead as well, even though I was able to hit two stomps. Guess I gotta switch in Dot and go for the Solar Beam. Oh, he's dead too? Okay. So then I switch in Gyarados, I go for the Thunderbolt, he's now paralyzed, and I hit the Hydro Pump. And then I hit a Surf and another Surf to take down the Dragonite because I couldn't go for Bite since he set up a load of barriers and he had plus 6 in defense. With the Elite 4 defeated, it's now time to take on PP for the final time. He starts off with his Pidgeot like always and he just goes for a Sky Attack so I'm easily able to get a free hit on him with 2 Thunderbolts and take him out. Next is Alakazam, so I switch in Toro and I go for two stomps, but we get taken now by a Psy Beam and a Psy Kick. Then I switch in Gyarados, I go for the Bite, but he sets up a Reflect, so my Bite barely does any damage. Next turn, he gets a critical hit with Psy Beam, which does a load of damage, but my Bite finishes off the Alakazam eventually. Next is Rhydon, and that thing is a Surf with one shot. Wait, what? Next is Arcanine, that thing is faster than my Gyarados, he goes for the takedown, I'm left with 5 HP but my Hydro Pump still takes it out in one hit. Next is Executor, so I switch in Charizard, go for the Ember but it barely does any damage and we get hit with a Barrage. Then I go for the Slash, it does a do a little bit more than Ember and I managed to get him down into red health after spamming it, but then we got taken out. So then I switch in Arcanine and finish off the Executor with a takedown. And last up is his Blastoise at level 65. But he one-shots my Arcanine, so I switch in Executor, but he has one shot too, so I switch in Gyarados, go for the Thunderbolt, it only does half, and he finishes me off. Yes, this is the first battle that I lose, and it's immediately the champion battle. So I tried again because it was just bad luck, and I got bad luck again, and Blastoise just finished me off again. But then... My Gyarados had more than enough health on my third attempt and two Thunderbolts took down the Blastoise and now Professor Oak is the real champion of the Kanto region. I do have to say this was probably the easiest challenge I've ever done and Pokemon Red and Blue are just the easiest games in my opinion. People complain about the newer games being easy but Red and Blue have such a bad AI that it makes it so easy to complete. If you try to do this in Pokemon Fire Red and Leaf Green, you can never be this underleveled and beat the league. But hey, it was kind of fun just sweeping through a game for once, so uh, yeah, thank you R9. So with that out of the way, don't forget to comment down below with what you want to see next, and I also want to thank my Patreon and membership supporters, Migi Gugla, Kenzie Bunk, Ben Atrial, and Felipe Morla. And as always people, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I'm Zwigo, and I'll see you guys next time.